So today I've come to the Jordan Museum. Jordan Museum is not included on the Jordan Pass, just like um, Mount Nebo or Madaba are not included. Madaba is um, a Greek Orthodox, so it's privately owned, and Mount Nebo is owned by the French uh, Franciscans, so uh, that's why it's not included on the Jordan Pass. I have no idea why. Jordan's museum is not included in the Jordan Pass, but 5 JD, 10 Australian dollars will get you in. So in here there is um, some absolutely fantastic um, relics from the earliest known human uh, like sculptures, a gazilla, gazilla, something like that. And also there is um, some of the Dead Sea Scrolls. There is hundreds of Dead Sea Scrolls and some of them are here. So let's hope that they allow me to do some filming when we're in there. So it appears that the only restriction is no flash photography. So when you come into the first hall, it's got about um, how Jordan is trying to tackle um, bio or renewable energy sources which is very interesting because the area um, Tefila has one of the largest um, wind farms in the world. And now we've come to a display about, looks like it's Petra. Different kinds of people have used uh, Jordan and uh, the treasury is uh, inscribed with symbols from Nabataeans, Egyptians and Romans. 5,000 years ago, people wrote down trade deals, laws and deaths, and it gradually in, um, became a complex communicating system. Wow. Sephatic. Sof from 100 BC to 100 AD from Mafra. Inscriptions capture names and accomplishments of early Jordanians. Many show that the language of Jordanians used, which is still not understood. This is a female figurine from 3600 3, 3100 BC in the Dead Sea and the coins are King Arturus IV and Queen Shaquila so that's AD 18 to AD 39, AD 40, AD 70 and AD 76 to 101 that smallest one. quite interesting little display you push the buttons and it'll show you different areas so that dark areas where the solar power potential is they're the governance these are where the major figurines or the major discoveries were Petra Pella and Gazal this one is the minerals, so that's copper, gold, potash, phosphate, uranium, iron, and limestone. That's where the agriculture is, so that is the Rift Valley, basically, that central core. This one's precipitation, and that kind of uh, follows that same one as the agriculture there with the precipitation. Population density, that should be just up in the north very highly populated there and for alternative energy sources where you could get wind from and um, Tefila. Tefila just in the bottom here is where there's already a wind, um, wind generating stations and that's back to the solar where solar could be um, harvested and notice that down here in the desert section which is Wadi Rum which is around here. Over 9,000 years old, these remarkable Ain Gazil, G-H-A-Z-A-L statues. 
represent the ancestors with innovative craftsmanship and mysterious cultural practices. They lived in a village not far from this museum. This is the one that I always think is the uh, most famous statue. It's the two-headed statue of the world's oldest humans. 32 plaster statues were discovered around Amman in 1980, not far from this museum. Still don't know what the meaning is. Look at those faces. Beautiful. So, hazard a guess, female and male, just looking at the body shape. Uneducated guess there. Paleolithic tools from um, 1, 1,500 to 150,000 BC. This is a mid Paleolithic for Neanderthal man. He's very talented and then Upper Paleolithic. Nabataean mortar and pestle, Natafian um, from 1200 BC, Wadi El Hamah in the north. These are fragments of the largest sculptured slab in the Levant. Levant is just the area to the north, the um, previous name of the region. Once again, this is probably from about 12,000 BC. Flint dagger from about 7,500 BC. Wow. Arrowheads. Beautiful little bowl there, it says from 12, um, 10, BC. These are pretty spooky. These are plastered pre-pottery Neolithic skulls from Jericho about 8,800 BC. Whew. Animal hunting from 6,500 to 6,900 BC. Often when you were around some of the sites you actually see fragments of these bowls that are still just lying on the ground. This one looks interesting because it has a, a whole magic technology. Clay moulds from um, 3,600 to 4,000 BC for uh, copper casting. You can see the copper there in that rock. That guy's pretty impressive, a bull or a cow. Zeomorphic vessel, an anthropoid vessel first produced by Kaleolithic. About 4000 BC. Two cornets. And this room is a really fantastic display for the Bedouins. It's a uh, movie running. Movie running about the Bedouin life, and there's some camel um, saddles that you can sit on, and there's some coffee pots. But these rocks here, where you can actually touch them, that one looks to have two camels, two camels on it. This one's definitely got a two-humped camel on it there. A couple of very handsome camels on that one there. Fascinating, wonder what they say. Wow, this cabinet is very interesting. It's got the bronze casting, it's got pins, 
it's got weapons, it's got axes, it's on like a ladle there, knives, bowl. Wow, that one's fascinating. So all of those are from about 2300 BC. This is evidence um, through this late Bronze Age that um, people from different areas moved. So this is Mycenaean pottery. And this is alabaster, which probably wasn't available in this area. Yeah, Egyptian from about 1800 BC. This stone uh, is called the El Balu steel, a Moabite document which is probably about the um, coronation of um, a Moab king, believed uh, to have been dated from 1309 to 1500. 1,151 BC. So this is the mesh of steel, another mesh of steel, um, discovered in 1868 by German missionaries um, between Salt and Karak. The steel talks about King Mesh's leadership, his lists of military and architectural accomplishment. It offers the Moabite version of the biblical narrative of Kings um, Kings 2, 3, 11, 3. And its importance of the steel lies at that the date is 841 or 842 BC, amongst the earliest known historical resources in the Iron Age Kingdom of Jordan. Statue of an Ammonite king. Um, this display should just demonstrates domestic um, life. So there are weights for the loom and spindles, clay pots, some beautiful clay pots hanging there. And these, I love oil lamps because they're just, I don't know, there's just something beautiful and organic about them. From 1200 to 500. 39 BC. The paintwork on that. Just spectacular. Coins from the Hellenistic period. Seventh century BC. Some pretty interesting faces there. This guy's got a bird. I just have a thing for oil lamps, they're just so cute. Wow, this one's pretty impressive. This is from about the first century BC found in Jerash. It's a camel carrying amphoras. <laughs> literally a beast of burden. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> this is a pretty impressive map. Philadelphia, Amman, Pella to the north. Gesera that is on Kais today. Petra, well that's fairly, and Ayla, that um, place I went to in um, Aqaba. This is the facade of um, Kerbat uh, Dahara Temple. Uh, Taurus, Gemini the Twins, and Cancer the Crab. Maybe a bird, it's only got two legs. 
and grapes and vine leaves. Oh, this is a goat maybe, look at these horns. Beauty was found in Petras in the first half of the first century and it's a um, Melipomene, one of the nine Greek muses and the patron of tragedy. She's just depicted here holding a mask of pan or satire, the god of pastures, flocks and shepherds, instead of the tragic mask usually associated with her. This came from Quasar El Bint, that square building at Petra. This one looks really, really fascinating because you can see where maybe a peg was placed in so that the arm could be at a different angle to the stone. Ath Augustus and Haddad from Kerbat Tanna near Tefila. I just love can um candles, lamps. This one's pretty interesting because you have a picture on how they potentially uh, carved those areas out there at Petra. Now we've moved into the third century and this is some gold earrings. This cabinet is also some glass. like ampules and pullers and brass bells from Omkais Gadara up in the north. So now we're coming into the relics of the Byzantine period and Byzantine basically just means that the uh, eastern part of the Roman Empire and this panel is from that church at Petra. There's an altar And on the top of it, um, for the Eucharist, where the, the wine and blood of Christ would have been kept. Church pulpit from the same Byzantine period. So that's about the early 6th century AD. So we're about to enter the hall where the Dead Sea Scrolls are. Now the Dead Sea Scrolls um, were found in a group of caves in pots um, by a shepherd and there's a couple of theories of how they got there that um, a group of priests freeing from the troubles in Jerusalem took them to the caves um, when they thought that the world was ending um, or that they were deliberately set there um, uh, for future reference so uh, let's go in and have a look at the Dead Sea Scrolls. The pots of the Dead Sea Scrolls. These are ones that I find the most interesting, the uh, copper ones. Wonderful. The last time I came to this museum, this um, Middle Eastern inventions um, section had an extra fee and now it's free of charge. So basically it walks you through um, mathematics, um, architecture, astronomy, um, just all the inventions that came out of the Middle East from writing, uh, medicine, inventions, just every invention. It's quite a good display. Some of the inventions that are depicted are articulating pumps and sails and trade winds and um, grinding corn and it's just absolutely great interactive display. The last display hall is a temporary display hall called Tal Azira which um, is in the north of um, Jordan near Lake Tibris. So um, around Omkais and Urbid. And a tell means a hill. So from the top of the hill you could see everywhere. So 
So, so this is a temporary display. Not much in here, but let's have a look. Demonstrations there about uh, how to do an archaeological site. Some here is demonstrating how a tell is formed, built up over time. And some of the pretty amazing things that were discovered there. Pottery wheel. Mosaics. Moulds. Plate fragment. Compartmental basin. Very interesting looking bowl there. A chalice. When I looked at those moulds before, you couldn't quite see how intricate they were. This one in the corner, I can see little grooves in it. They're just beautiful, so intricate. And that one at the back, it's upside down, but there's a cross on it. This one here is the bead of a ram's head. Gorgeous. This is a female figurine pendant. Just beautiful. Made of glass from the Iron Age too. With that Egyptian influence, there's a scarab. And I think this is my favorite of all, the signet ring. Just beautiful. On that scarab piece I looked at before, there's the whole new thread. Well, it was only a small room, it was a very nice room. Some beautiful exhibits there. So um, there are the three halls for the Jordan Museum.